It's Seth Green, everybody, by the way. So you've been acting since you were like a, t- a tiny baby, a, a little kid. Did you force yeah. your parents to let you do it or yeah. did they did they encourage you or you were like, we want, I want to do this? No, I was like, I need to do you this. You were in New York or here? I was in Philadelphia. Oh, and, right. And was able to get an audition with a manager. I, I finagled my way into a on-camera training school in Philadelphia when I was six years old. My mom, this is the, the thing I really credit my parents with is they let me run away and join the circus. Like my mom went with me on all these auditions, took me on all of these jobs. Like what an insane nine years we spent together doing this thing. And it's crazy for me because you think about a a kid, your kid coming to you with that level of certainty. Like, can you even believe them? Okay. If you had a kid, hypothetically, would you let them be a child actor? Well, that kind of depends on how serious they are about it. It's, it's, a, it's a weird thing to how say. How do you gauge that? I'd be optimistic that I'd raise a kid that would be comfortable telling me how they actually feel. I'd be optimistic that I would be able to encourage a kid to tell me the truth, in, at least with respect to what they want or h- how they feel. And I know the moments, like the, the catalytic moments in my life that made me certain that what I did is perform in whatever f- shape that takes. What I do is perform. If a kid, if my kid came to me with that level of certainty and willingness to actually do the work, to be disciplined, to, it's not, it's not an easy fucking task. But I man. worry, don't you worry about just the inherent danger of it? Meaning it, it seems like you've escaped mental illness, but mm. many child actors don't. Absolutely. But I and, also intentionally set to study myself, my feelings and my access to them in, in tandem with becoming a better Were you actor. always? Yeah. I'm, but I'm, I'm saying when you're 10, I just think like there's something about you, not only like molestation, I'm just talking about. Yeah, yeah, no. The listen, being, I having to perform. a million different bullets. Like I think about how many times I, it was demanded of me to engage in an adult way before I was emotionally prepared to, but I don't blame anybody for that. And, and I also look at, you know, some of it's luck, some of it's prep, some of it's just like who you are. I've reflected not with a survivor's guilt, but like a like an unflinching assessment of just how close I came to dying or being poisoned or being raped. Any of these kinds of things. Now, like you specific incidences? Yeah. Or just that, or, generally. Or even or even how many like anytime someone's come forward and they're like, this person raped me, this person molested me, or when I was young, I wound up in this kind of situation. I'll be like, oh my God, I hung out with that person. I was in a car with that person. I went to a, uh, an audition and spent an afternoon with this person. I think, and like in those moments, I could reflect s- sort of and, and assume like, oh, what was that? And re- but the things that I remember were not incidents of somebody preying upon me. Right. You know what but I mean? you were adjacent. Always. You were in the same yeah. venue or the Which same. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I would do everything I could to prepare that kid for those levels of awareness. Like as fucked up as that sounds, I got exposed to tons of adult concepts, um, c- cultural things, like a million different schools of thought. And all it did was make me a little more aware that those kinds of things coexisted with all of these opportunities to do good. So, and probably a lot of positive adult concepts, like yeah. not just like, no, I, learned I don't even know what the negative ones At an accelerated ones rate. I learned about things at an earlier time. So I didn't you, you formulate a worldview that was inhibited by uh, an ignorance of the existence of these things. So your mom was taking you to these things. Did she yeah. also take you to, did you also play soccer and all that shit? No. Because I'm wondering what the dip, because when you say you and your mom go to auditions yeah. for nine years, it, do you think it ends up being around the same amount of soccer practices, games, basketball? Oh, interesting. I don't know. We had probably more away games than the average team. Like, <laughs> yeah, mo- it's go, like, yeah, you're like, yeah, in we're in like Montreal. Club and, league. Yeah, just not cities and states. And 
countries doing work. Oh, right. You'd have work. to go shoot for a yeah. month or what was Three the months, month? Uh, we were in, uh, all the, where was that? That was, yeah, it was all Montreal. A whole for the day my parents got away? The, the day my parents, <laughs> no, day ran, my away? parents ran away? I was already living alone in LA. I had an apartment of my own and was responsible. How old? Oof. 17? I moved what out. do you make of that looking back? Well, it gives me a different impression of 17 year olds when I meet them. As far as like, I had a level of certainty and capability, discipline, responsibility to not just succeed, but thrive at an age where no one, no adult would have ordinarily given me that, that level of respect. But I had proven it over and over again that not only was I good at the thing, but I was going to work hard enough to be awesome at the thing. And if you hired me, not only am I going to come to fucking tear this thing apart, but I'm going to do something memorable that nobody's ever seen. You used to book a lot of shit. <laughs> like you weren't a lot. I was like, oh, fuck that guy. Found my niche. Affable stoner, the like kind of weird best friend yeah. who's always telling you, you should try this carbonated soda. <laughs> <laughs> I always, when I, <laughs> I do commercials sometimes and I, on pitches, I say like, I'm not going to have people do what I call Sunny D acting and you're exactly the right age. You probably audition for it. Like Sunny D. Here we got soda, OJ, purple stuff and two kinds of Sunny D. You get the they Sunny D shit. I did a whole crush campaign. Like they, so you couldn't do Sunny D. Yeah, but they teed me up. I did their cream soda, their orange soda. It's orange crush. It's got huge taste. It's like massive and it was a it was a director i did their grape soda at one point and they had different flavors for different regions regions so we would do the canadian stuff the australian stuff it was crazy but i got in with this director and this uh company and whenever they needed you know the kind of accessible slacker they called me you can get a rhythm doing commercials or, yeah. or, or anything like when the casting people know you and can count on you for something and then they call you in and you give them what they're mm -hmm. expecting. Everybody makes everybody look good. It's very exciting. Yeah. That's how this business runs. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. I'm not really used to the green screen.